Evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's Tuesday, October 5th, 2010. It's day nine daily, number 194. But most importantly of all, it is Newbie Tuesday. One of the best days of the week. Not quite as awesome as Monday, I will admit. But in today's Newbie Tuesday, we're going to be looking at the idea of drone timing. Now, before I say any of this about Zerg and what I mean by drone timing, we have to think about the way that Terran and Protoss operate. So, with Terran and Protoss, you actually do have the ability to constantly make workers. And this is a very important concept. Constantly making workers. Not only can you do it, you should do it. You have one building, the command center. It is devoted to only making SCVs. Keep hitting the S button. Because whenever you expand, and if you're playing correctly, you should be expanding a lot. Whenever you expand, you can take half the workers mining minerals in your main and transfer them to your expansion. That is called Maynarding. There are many techniques that you can do. Uh, you can use to do more efficient Maynarding. Uh, for instance, hotkeying workers, hotkeying the screens. It's Maynarding, right? You're transferring your workers. Um, and a lot of people will have problems with Terran or Protoss because they don't constantly make those workers, right? They'll get to like 24 workers and they'll say something like, oh, well, I really want to make third gate and be more aggressive. And they do it and it feels cool and all that jazz. And their attack doesn't work. And then later on, when they try to take their expansion, ugh, they transfer it and they have 12 workers in their main, 12 of the expansion, and that's garbage. And they will end up losing in the later stages of the game. So when I really look at a Terran or Protoss play, I say probes and pylons, probes and pylons. You know, like workers and supply, SCV supply, just probes and pylons. Just make sure you're constantly making workers. Make sure you're constantly not getting supply blocked. And it's interesting because people tend to... Um, dissociate mechanical play, such as constantly looking at the food in the top right, constantly making sure you're making workers at the bottom. They, they, they dissociate those mechanics from strategy, right? They say, oh yeah, I have good builds, but my mechanics are a little off. A build order and the mechanic are almost the same thing, right? They're almost, they're so intertwined. Let me give you an example. I can tell you for a fact, given the following setup, I have two gateways that are warp gates. I have one robotics facility, I'm constantly making pylons, I'm constantly making probes. With this setup, I cannot do anything else. I am broke constantly. If I'm making gateway units, if I'm making immortals and observers, if I'm making probes and I'm making pylons, I do not have any more money left over. So this means that if I'm observing someone, if I'm doing a shoutcast of a tournament, such as the IEM uh, New York tournament coming up, uh, MLG DC, uh, MSI Cup in Phoenix, or the uh, DreamHack in Sweden, I'll beat all of those. If I'm doing one of these games and I suddenly see a Protoss player going three warp gate, one robotics facility, I definitively know he doesn't have the money to do that. So he either has to stop making probes or he has to stop making pylons. And a good way to stop making pylons is to be really aggressive. You're losing lots of units, he's losing lots of units, you don't have to make those extra pylons. Uh, or he has to not be making out of all the structures at the same time, right? It's so integral to the functionality of the build. If I see someone with two warp gates and no robotics facility, I know that he will have enough money to expand or to make a third gate or to go down some tech path and start building up enough funds to do other things. So um, with that sort of logic in mind, you can clearly see how there's a lot of integration in when you are or in your strategy based upon just pylons and probes. Are you making pylons and probes? And that really was the emphasis of last Newbie Tuesday, was pylons and probes, pylons and probes, just don't forget them, keep making them, etc. But of course, many Zerg players said, well, I'm Zerg, I don't have the choice of constantly making drones. I either have to make a worker with a larva, or I have to make a unit with that larva. And that is why Zerg truly is one of the hardest races at the outset just to get used to. In Brood War, I was of the opinion, as were many others, that Zerg was the hardest race because you really had to know exactly when to make drones, exactly when to make units, and, and you didn't have the convenience of being able to box everything in one control group. Try having 80 Zerglings, each in control groups of 12. Man, your keyboard fills up fast. Ugh. So, um, the big idea that we're gonna talk about today, again, is when you make drones. And there are two basic categories that we're going to see. One is 
I just didn't make enough drones. And two is I made way too many drones and he attacked me and I lost with almost nothing. We're gonna just move right out of the theory and go directly into this game contributed by iWave. And this game is going to be uh, symptomatic of someone who makes not enough drones at all. And we're gonna see how everything appears to make lots and lots of sense at the start. All right, good, my sound is enabled. I am very, very wise indeed. So. Um, what's gonna happen is we're gonna see iWave just do a very usual pro or, uh, Zerg opening. He is going to continue to make drones. We're gonna open up our production tab because our good question is, when do we make drones? I'm not gonna try to answer the when do we make drones question quite yet, but I'm just gonna show first a problem that happens. I'm gonna first show the problem that happens and then we're gonna bounce back. We're gonna talk a little bit about a big high level idea, but ideas don't make sense. They don't even actually mean anything unless we sit down, look at a game and say, oh yeah, I wanna to try to not do that. There's a spawning pool going down, gas pool. Everyone sees an opening like this all the time. iWave also had a very interesting Overlord Scout pattern. I actually do this in Zergus Protoss on Metalopolis. I like the way it feels. Not the point of this daily though, not the point. It's just drones when we make them and why we end up not making enough. That's the point of this specific game. That we're not gonna make enough drones. So we're going to see the usual sort of thing, right? He's waiting for this overlord to finish so he can begin a queen. Uh, there's the queen, he should be making zergling speed. All right, fantastic, good, good. And at this phase of the game, most people kind of wanna poach outside the Protoss's base. Um, I wave inadvertently confusing the 1v1 with a 2v2. Arr, just kidding. So iWave will be expanding shortly. Come on, iWave. You know, and, and honestly, honestly, when you see money like this up into the 600 range or something like that, most people will be able to identify that as, hey, that's more than you should have. You should be spending that money. But that's actually a slightly different problem than the am I making drones or am I making units problem. They can definitely influence one another, but for, for the sake of just isolating one thing at a time, we're still going to pretty much only talk about drones. Now see, this is already a very smart thing that iWave is doing. He is not making uh, Zerglings right now. He's getting the speed upgrade, he got a very fast pool, but he's only making two Zerglings. That's because he needs speed fast, he doesn't need Zerglings fast. So he can get a few Zerglings, do this sort of junk where he stands outside his opponent, the front of his opponent's base. Um, but we're actually going to go through a, a, a deeper analysis of this one game in just a moment. Because I want to just do a big broad stroke. Because doing, doing the real nitty gritties of when do I make drones, when do I make units, might feel really mysterious. Like, oh, oh, you made six Zerglings, you should make four in a drone. It's not quite that sophisticated at all. It's pretty general, actually. It's pretty big strokes. Let's just focus on the big strokes first. So we see our, our lovely friend iWave, he has uh, finished his lair, he's getting a Hydralisk Den, great, and oh no, it looks like Psionic is doing uh, one of these three gate into expand styles. We see an Observer coming out, is he getting one of those robotic support bays? Ew, that makes some of those icky Colossi. And Colossi are of course awesome, there's a support bay going down. Now. Here is going to be a little bit of a struggle period for um, iWave. So he makes a good amount of Hydralisks right at the start. Wants to hold off some sort of push. Uh, maybe wants to do a little bit of damage. That's exactly what we see. Uh, we're going to speed things up a little bit here. He's just can, he, he's making some more drones. All right, good. He's starting to get some economy up here. This is not that many drones. I just want you to note 10 drones mining is not that many drones. How many drones does he have mining in his main? Well, it looks like he has 18 drones mining. That's yeah, still kind of meh. We would ideally want more. Protoss is having, you know, about that many here and about that many here. Oh my goodness, Protoss has more workers than we do. So this is what happens. Now, I want you to just note the interaction of this battle with this production tab up here. Tell me that this has not happened to you, right? I'm moving in here for an attack. I'm not entirely sure this attack will work. It feels like it'll work. And uh-oh, we're moving in. Oh, we're getting force fielded. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Could have could have been a few extra little tricks we could have done to make that army uh, for Zerg do a little bit more damage. But for the most part, uh-oh, that didn't work so well. Now, what happens with Zerg? He has seven units. 
he sees a shit ton of units. So he responds by going, oh Jesus, and making a lot of Zerglings. Because Zerg is aware that if Protoss counterattacks, he's going to lose. Now let me just repeat that again, much more succinctly. If you do an attack that gets crushed, your gut instinct is, oh, I've got to make some units so I don't die. Yeah, normal, right? Normal. But now, this is the start of, of, the, of the tumbling downhill motion, right? This is the real problem that we get. Here is the big issue. All of a sudden, I-Wave only really wants to make units. I'm even going to come back to this extractor multiple times and note that nothing ever really goes into it. Um, and when we're low on drones, not only can we not make that many units, we also can't expand that much. We also cannot get any extra upgrades infestation pit going down but look at this production tab all units all units but look at um psionic really should be making probes as well here but he is a fortunately supply block so we'll let it slide but now zerg is trying to position himself see he's, he's basically rebuilt the same army that he just lost in this attack down here and in a moment he's going to see that there are a bunch of units here and oh no what does he do 22 more zerglings coming out so many more zerglings coming out right now he's getting a hive why is he getting a hive he goes oh crap not only did my attack lose but i know he's going colossus ultralisks are really good against colossus now that's that's a half truth. That is a poisonous way to think, right? Sure, when you get ultralisks, they do their bonus damage to armored, and all the stalkers and colossi are armored. But ultras are expensive. You need money to make ultralisks. You don't just go ultras. You kind of have to have like four, three or so expansions to begin getting ultras because there's so much money. So going back to this game here, yeah, it makes logical sense. Oh, geez, I got to make the units so that way I can end up um, holding off this scary push. And oh my god, I need to get ultralisks. I need to get a hive so that way I can get the ultralisks to kill all this stuff off. But all of a sudden, no expo. Look down here at the bottom right. Expo going up for Protoss. You know what Protoss is doing? He's just kind of hanging out and look at the probes that he's making. And if we just go to the unit counting station, we see that Protoss is vastly ahead of Zerg in terms of workers. Way, 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 way ahead. Now, uh, looks like Iwave is advancing forward. He might do a poke here. He might not necessarily commit. With Hydras, it's a little bit hard to retreat. And I just want to point out that Zerg is at 100 food and has just now started a third base. 100 food and has just now started a third base. And... I'm, I'm going to say this now, and we're gonna, again, we're going to go back in this game in detail and see all this sort of adding up. I want to explain the fear before I explain the solutions. So that way you can identify if you have the fear that's poisoning your mindset. What can happen now is that in the course of this game, iWave could be one of those people who goes on the forum and says, I'm having a lot of trouble against a player who goes, three warp gate expands with a colossus. Because if I try to do attacks, I lose. And then he just takes a third quickly and overwhelms me. And look at how one-sided this attack was. And I'm still on the unit tab going back to production. What is Wave doing? He's making as many Zerglings as he can, right? Because again, he's just desperately trying to make some units because he needs to stay alive. Oh my goodness, we've upgraded from 10 drones to 11. Uh, do we still have the same 18 drones here? Yes, we still. Oh no, actually we have one less because we made an infestation pit. We have 17 drones here. And this entire little cascading sequence of, of frowniness for Wave was all started by a lack of drones at the outset. And this is what's really hard, because if you are in Wave's spot right now, what do you do? What do you do? Honestly, this seems like a position that a lot of Zerg players will get themselves into. Many, many Zerg players will be in the same position as I-Wave, and they will be wondering, God, Protoss seems to be out-expanding me. He seems to be out-armying me. I bet he's even getting more upgrades than I am. Wow, how do I possibly deal with this? And the answer is you probably just didn't make enough friggin' drones. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this up. We're going to wrap up this game, and we're going to re-review it in ultra-slow motion, talking about when drones should be made and why, and why that fear can be so crippling. And, you know, how to avoid it. See, he comes up to the high ground, but of course... Doop, 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 doop. Come on, Protoss. No, Protoss doesn't force field the ramp. I guess that would have been uh, a little bit excessive, because Protoss is 
doing just fine uh, in this game. I would say Protoss is pretty in a pretty comfortable position right now. There goes the force field. There goes drones trying to retreat. Pain. So we're going to come right back to the very outset of the game. Um, so I'm actually going to go to the wave cam because, interestingly enough, people will tend to perceive much more danger than there actually is. They will instinctively make more drones than they, or excuse me, make more units than they need to. Here's the 14 gas. Here is the 14 pool. Now, in this second re-review of this game, let's really try to uh, discuss when we should be making drones and when we should be making zerglings. So, very first thing to note. We could be saving larvae, so that way when our pool finishes, we get a bunch of zerglings, but we don't need a bunch of zerglings at the start. Are we going to attack him, really, with six zerglings at the start? No, he'll have a zealot. He'll kill us. Do we really need six zerglings right at the start so we don't lose to any aggression? No, of course not. We get a queen out, and then we can start making zerglings if we're really scared. We can make a spine crawler if we're really scared. And that might seem excessive, the spine crawler. But here's the most important thing. Larva, um... Things don't take more or less larva. Things take one larva. A zergling that costs 50 costs or takes just as much larva as a hydralisk that costs 100 minerals and 50 gas. So in a sense, if you have two hatches constantly making larva, if you are making lots of hydralisks, you need more drones. If you are making lots of zerglings, you are making less drones. Um, and that last thing I said I think is the, the more important thing. Um... If you are making zerglings, you are not making drones. One spine crawler. How much larva did a spine crawler cost? It cost one larva. One spine crawler is probably going to be as effective as six to eight zerglings in dealing with some early pressure. But how many larva did six to eight zerglings cost? Three to four. And I want you to think in terms of a larva. Larva are a resource for zerg. That is why drone timing is really hard. Larva-wise, it's better to just throw down a spine crawler because we still can make two extra drones. If we make three zerglings, we cannot make those two extra drones because we do not have the spare larva. So very smartly, iWave is going to be getting uh, the gas here in a minute. Uh, he made one zergling, which of course blocked him from getting the queen. Doesn't bother me. Not the point of today's daily. Not interested in that. Very important to just stay focused. So at the start, uh, how's Wave going to spend his money? He really should be expanding right now. Um, I Wave wants to two v two really fast. Uh, do, 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 do. Not exactly doing anything with his money quite yet. Hey, all right, Queen's done. Yeah, and in production, look at this drones getting made. Another queen getting made, hatch going down. I uh, would certainly love this queen to scoot out of the way, but that's okay. We can just look at this drone timing now. At this point in the game, we have seen a cybernetics core and a gateway. I just want to reveal to you that, sure, these gateways are making, but in the unit station, Protoss has exactly one unit, and a second one is coming up. Ooh, two units. Scary. Not scary at all. Don't make any friggin' units. Make drones. Make those drones. Make drones. Make drones. Make drones. Make drones. Make drones. Make them drones. So, moving right along... Um, we have some overlords hatching. Uh, looks like we have in production. Uh, looks like we're getting a little bit delayed on our droning. Oh, we have a layer coming up, getting more drones. I'm a little curious why we're getting our layer so fast. I mean, I know it's for Hydralis, that's fine. But if it is for Hydralis, then remember, my god, do we have to make a lot of drones because one larva will be spent with 100 minerals and 50 gas to make a Hydralis. That is so much money. So we see lots of drones getting made, we see lots of drones getting made, we see lots of drones getting made. Now, I want to note this period of time right here. Psionic has just now finished his warp gates. We can see that he just warped in a few sets of units. See the little, um, the little spinny dude, the little notifier of when units can be made? Just warp these units in. Just warp them in. And this is not a particularly scary army. We have a few stalkers, we have a few sentries, we have a zealot. And now suddenly we see why scouting the front of our opponent's base is so important. When I say scouting the front, I mean go check if he's expanding, go check if he ha has units at the front of his base, and see if there's anything scary coming. I cannot tell you how often players do not do this. Does iWave know that there's an expansion here? No, he doesn't. Sure, he can suicide an overlord, but why suicide an overlord when you can just walk a zergling, see that there's a nexus, and back right off again? Because if iWave had seen that, see these 10 zerglings that are getting made? 
that might be a good decision if he's under pressure from a four warp gate push or a three warp gate push. But if his opponent is expanding, hell, make a spine crawler, get eight zerglings, do counterattacks here, and your your uh, Protoss opponent literally cannot leave his base. So right now, drones should be um, getting made. Drones should be getting made. And see, here's a zergling coming at the front. Drones should be getting made. The Zergling's probably a little bit confused. You see a forge going down? Oh yeah, you can definitely make some drones. And now our Hydralisk Den just finished. If we wanted, yeah, we could make seven Hydralisks. We still have our one spine crawler. But note some extra things right now. We have 450 minerals. We could have expanded up here already. We could continue to make drones. This small amount of Zerglings, perfect. We can start doing counterattacks. Now, if we actually look at Psionic's point of view, Psionic can't actually move out of his base so easily. It's quite risky to advance too far forward, especially if you reveal some Zerglings back here and do a little counterattack. That's going to work so well to keep him pinned back. In the meantime, you can be droning, making units, and here, it just suddenly, everything sort of falls apart. So we should be making drones right now, we should be making drones right now, we should be making drones right now. We can stop, make a handful of important units to help keep us alive, but we just need to keep making drones, keep making drones. And that's something I'm going to come back to, the few important things to keep us alive, so we can keep making drones and keep making drones, keep making drones. Moving forward, we see, oh, we're starting to make some drones again, that's good, and suddenly more units are getting made, suddenly more units, we should be making drones. Probably starting about now, right when Zerg's probably at 70, 70 to 80 to 90 food. That's when Zerg really should start making drones. Why? Not because it's some arbitrary statement, but because I've seen Protoss expand. I know he's going to have a really good economy, so I need to get an even better economy. Now i got to really make the drones, and I'm not really scared of getting attacked early on. And I really know this because I scouted the front. I scouted the front. I scouted the freaking front of his freaking base. All right. So, for instance, if I scout the front of his base, I don't see a nexus. In fact, I don't see um, that many units at the front of his base. Jeez, he's probably going for some sort of warp gate thing. The, 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 or, excuse me, not warp gate, some sort of stargate business. So what I should probably do is make some hydralisks and then go right back to making drones. You don't need a lot of hydralisks to defeat uh, stargates, but you do need them kind of fast. Then I go right back to making drones. If I see no expansion at the front, I don't see any other tech structures, but I see a lot of warp gates and warp gate units, I should really only be making units, and I should completely cut drone production until I am uh, s satisfied with my defense, and a, a good way to do that is to check whenever he's expanding. I cannot tell you how easy of a rule that is to follow. If I'm on two base, and he's on one base, I build drones up to around 40 food, start making units, squeeze in a few extra drones, and then only make units and upgrades and don't expand until he does. Because he's on one base and you're on two. You don't need to risk a third base quite yet. And yet, the tip top ultra high levels of diamond, Zerg players could probably get away with a third base. But not only is that not needed if you are in the lower leagues, but it's also going to be detrimental if you try it. You're not going to get when to do it until you're like a 1500, 1600 diamond zerg. And then you can kind of go, oh, I've been two basing for a while, but I'm noticing I have this one weakness and I can make up for it with a fast third base. If you're in the gold league or something like that, don't try to get fancy. Don't do any of this fanciness. Just, you know, try to set some times for yourself. So for me, I say around 45 if he hasn't expanded. Jeez, I should really begin making almost all units, maybe even throwing some spine crawlers, depending on what I'm doing. Oh, if I am at, um, or if early on I see him expanding, then, oh, geez, I can, I can expand again, I can start getting upgrades, I can start getting a layer, and I only need, like, four Zerglings to shut down scouts. Because if for some reason he moves out, it's going to be one, maybe two gateways worth of units. I just slam out a ton of Zerglings with my three hatch, three queen, and I'm fine. And I'm absolutely fine. The, again, the, the important thing to note is that if you are in Iwave's position and you are being needlessly aggressive... You better know for a fact that this is going to help you win the game. And honestly, if you do this attack and it fails miserably, pretend that you didn't attack and go right back to making drones, right? Have yourself a really dumb loss. A very, very, very dumb loss. And I actually, uh, I wanted to state for the record that we are even going to be watching a game of Fruit Cellar against OGS the STC. Because again, it's Newbie Tuesdays, wanted to watch plenty of scrubs. 
Uh, where was the next game that we were going to be doing today? Oh yeah, that's right. It was anti Han timing. Yes, from LF Haunt. So thank you, Wave, for your contribution. And I want to just note really fast, Wave didn't play poorly. It's not like I watched Wave play and I was like, oh god, what is he doing? He had no clue. He did the, the gas pool build, he took his expansion, he was trying to make a good amount of drones, um, he got his hydralisks quickly, uh, uh, he took his expansion at a reasonable time, but you'll note that one little slip up where you suddenly start to not make as many drones as you should, and then an attack happens, and, you, and then you get the fear of, oh my god, I could lose it any minute, I gotta make units so I don't lose it any minute. That is poison. Because anytime, I'll, okay, here's just the, I want to repeat this again. Anytime you say to yourself, if he attacks right now, I could crush this attack with all these units. I want you to also say, and what happens if he just doesn't attack? I remember playing against a Protoss player, and it, it felt, I felt awful after this game. I played against a Protoss player who went five warp gate against me. I was Zerg. Five warp gate, and I scouted it, and he didn't cancel him because he's not my brother tasteless, right? He straight up went five warp gate, and I made I made six spine crawlers, and I made a ton of zerglings, and he 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 moved forward, saw it, and just moved right back and expanded. He literally made five warp gates, and then said, "Oh, well, if you're that turtled up, I don't even care that I I am suddenly not even going to use three warp gates for the next five minutes." I'm just going to expand. And then he made like an extra zealot, an extra sentry for a little while. He expanded. He made a lot of probes. But it screwed me over the fact that he didn't attack, right? It was very ruinsome. Now, I want to I do another uh, good game from LF Haunt. We're going to do a similar analysis to what we did last game. But uh, again, this is going to less be about, oh my god, I'm scared. I better, uh, I'm going to st start making units and never stop. This relates a lot to the idea of, of, how do I time my drones based on what he's doing if he is being unpredictable? Because right off the bat, Scott, the opponent, is making two barracks. No one really goes two barracks before Orbital Command and gets a gas. This just seems a little off. We see Elef Haunt doing a very reasonable early expand timing. Very, very, very reasonable. We're going to open up production so we can keep track on whether we're making drones or whether we're making units. So we see um, some stuff coming out. Uh, we see an Overlord scouting up here at the front. On this map, uh, just note, be really careful with your scouting Overlords. You know, leave them here, floating around this thing. Uh, even up here is dangerous, because he can see it with his Elnaga Watchtower. Very, very, very sort of scary thing to, to, to note. Just be really careful with them. So at this point in the game, LF Haunt, he's making two Zerglings. That's perfect. Why two? Because two is going to let us scout the front really, really easily. It's going to let us scout the front. Now, this is uh, something that has happened to me quite a bit, where suddenly they'll come out with an attack, and I am not expecting it. And what ends up happening is I see it way too late. When you're starting Zerglings hatch, sure, chase the SCV, but always send one Zergling right here to the Zelmaga Watchtower. Or send one Zergling to the front of his base. Now, this phase in the game, this is a lot of times where overreaction comes. Like, I counted five Marines, and you should be capable of counting them kind of quickly in your head. You just go, okay, there's five of them. Looks like there's an SCV, maybe he'll be coming with seven or so. Um, this spine crawler is unnecessary. Very unnecessary. Second spine crawler, really unnecessary. How many Zerglings can kill five Marines? Do you have an answer? Probably should. Probably should have an answer to that question. What about two Queens? Because you have a Queen in your main, you see a really scary rush coming, bring that Queen in the main down to the expansion, right? You bring the Queen down, and then probably like four to six Zerglings and your two Queens are just going to smash that. It's going to mollywomp that. It's not even going to be close. Um, but this is a very natural overreaction that happens. We're going to see LF Haunt, I mean, and, and this seems reasonable, right? This seems like a reasonable course of action that LF Haunt is doing. He's in crisis mode. Oh my goodness, a bunker. Here's the target firing going down. Oh my god, and he's going to lose a queen. Oh, how tragic. I mean, even the drones nibbling their way, and we could probably get away with this with just like two Zerglings, a handful of drones, our two queens, and we'd be fine. Um, and all of a sudden, this spine crawler is a little bit of wasted money. But now, now note, okay, so here is three drones that could have been made. Notice the attack is gone. The attack is totally finished. Completely over. Here is a bunch of Zerglings. That's three drones that could have been, uh, or th uh, this could have been three drones. This Zergling here could have been three drones. 
Uh, I see two more sets of Zerglings that could have been... Okay, so we had six drones, seven drones, and an eighth drone there. There were eight drones that we suddenly don't have. If we go to the unit counting station, imagine if it was 28 drones to 19 SCVs. Would have been feeling a lot more comfortable. So my knowledge of what I can beat there helps me really see that I can be getting away with more drones than I, um, than I might perceive. Again, it kind of relates back to that fear. But now Scott... Based on his unpredictable opening, weirdly enough, now has, like, three barracks up and is getting a factory and seems to have some gas rolling in. So, um, what's happening right now, uh, well, actually, I'll go, I'll go ahead a little bit, uh, just slightly little teensy tiny bit more. So now we have Haunt, who's probably regaining his footing a little bit, um, he's, you know, he's making a banely nest, he wants to stay alive. Uh, here comes, he's trying to rebuild that second queen, he's getting supply blocked, and here is another seemingly random attack time by Scott. Very, very weird random attack time. And people will see things like, oh, a four warp gate push will happen at exactly six minutes and thirty seconds. So at six minutes I need to begin constructing units. They can do that. But if it's against a Terran, Terran doesn't need to wait for warp gates, he can kind of move out whenever. And then this sort of stuff happens. And you kind of go, oh, oh, God. By the way, in this case, go surround the Marines. Just, you know, do that. The Marauders aren't really going to do very much damage to your Zerglings at all. So suddenly now, LF Haunt is once again obligated to make Zerglings. He's feeling very uh, focused on Zerglings at this point in time. He feels like he has no other choices, really. And that seems to make sense. But notice, notice how after he cleaned that up, look at how many more Zerglings he had left over. This, all this could have been drones again. All this could have been drones. He needed to make maybe uh, maybe this many Zerglings to hold off that last few skirting groups of Marines. And then all the rest of them could have been made into drones. All the rest of those. Um, and for any of you who want to see an example of good drone timing as it relates to this, we're going to watch a Fruit Cellar game right after this. Right directly after this one. So now Haunt, now Haunt is suddenly starting to go, all right, cool, I have my army going on here. I'm going to begin uh, trying to make some units. Or excuse me, trying to make some drones. Yeah, finally. Oh, thank God, Elephant's making some units. Oh, thank God he's making some units. You see a Baneling bust coming in. I'm going to ignore this for just one period of time. Now, here is a very important thing when you're dealing with that seemingly random-ass kind of attack that's coming in. With that sort of randomness, what you want to do is you want to have some power units, some control units, or just some control things that let you not worry about the randomness. Here's an example. Mutalisks, one of the best power control units in the game. I make a bunch of Mutalisks against Terran. Um, I don't care if he was in the mood to go Hellions or Marauders or Vikings at the start or even Thors. Once you get the Mutalus out, he kind of has to just sort of pull back and go, oh, geez, I can't, I can't really move out until I can really crush Mutalus. What happens if he tries to sneak a dropship out? You spot it and kill it. What happens if he runs out with some Hellions? You track down the Hellions and you kill him. Again, I want you to note really important thing. Mutalus cost one larva. One. A Mutalus is one larva. Um, how many Mutalus do you need to kill a Hellion? One. You need one Mutalisk. I mean, you're probably going to want, like, I would say seven, eight Mutalisks. Seven, eight Mutalisks. Just seven or eight Mutalisks to shut down most early Hellion harass, most harassment of all type. Now, how many Zerglings would you need to, to hold off, like, four, five, six Hellions? A lot more than eight Larva worth. Certainly a lot more than eight Larva worth. A lot more than eight Larva worth. Notice how I keep coming back to Larva. If you spend your Larva on a power unit like Mutalisks, all the rest of your Larva can be devoted to drones. Why um, are people starting to like getting fast infestors as Zerg? Because it's something that requires one Larva, can delay gigantic pushes, so, I'm making drones, I'm making drones. Oh shit, Terran's coming out at random time X. Thank God I have three infestors, and I can just fungal growth it, and he's locked down. And tries to advance again. Fungal growth, it's locked down, and he waits a little bit. Fungal growth, and then he's trying to come a little bit. So, right when that attack started, I only had three infestors and nothing but drones. And I went, oh, now his attack's coming. I waited until the last possible second. Now I can start making units, and I have my power units helping keep me alive. In the early game, what's a very good choice for defense? Spine crawlers, because they cost one larva, one drone to build. 
very key. It can be very, very tempting to make lots of Zerglings on uh, early on at the start. They're pretty great. But people also have been liking Roaches as an early defense. Because they need the mobility to deal with Hellions. They need the mobility to deal with Reapers. And one Roach costs one Larva. Freeing up all the rest of your Larva to be devoted exclusively to drones. Like, seriously, seriously, that's really important, is the idea of having these power units. So, roaches, very early in the game, are good, like, help me stay alive, as well as spine crawlers. Then mutilists later on, and infestors, are very, 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 very key. Um, so, when we come back to this game, we come back and look at this game. Um, Haunt was making a lot of Zerglings at the start because he was feeling under pressure, and because it was right on that first attack where he made a few too many Zerglings and couldn't get enough drones up, and then after this he felt obligated to make a lot of Zerglings. Now, Banelings, I do consider Banelings to be a pretty damn good power unit. For example, in Zerg vs. Zerg, pretend that you have just six Banelings you're going to be able to kill a lot of Zerglings, especially if you position it properly. So if you just go Baneling Drone, great way to get an expansion up. Great way to get more drones up. Easy, easy. What unit can you make that kills lots of other units? Mutilists are very good at killing lots of stuff. Banelings good at killing lots of stuff. Here's another very natural thing that people tend to do. They were under pressure at the start, and they suddenly said to themselves, Oh my goodness, I must do counter pressure. Oh, um... Should just make drones. There's nothing wrong with not attacking, especially with Zerg. You should see the way Cool Fu plays. He's just defend, 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 macro, 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 macro. Win at the 20 minute mark consistently. Very, very good stuff. So the sort of unpredictability of our opponent doesn't really matter. We're going to make a few key power units. We could, if we saw, uh, for instance, two reactors, we could just say, all right, cool. Well, I guess I'm going to go Banelings. Maybe I could do something fancy like get Burrow. Probably don't have to do that. I could just go Spine Crawler with Bane Links. And there you go. I've spent maybe 10 total larva on my defense. And I'm completely secure. Great. So then what happens is LF Haunt overcompensated, right? See, look, he has a ton of drones here. And then he has a ton of drones here. And I just want you to see now that in the same game, in the early game, we weren't making enough drones. And now in the mid game, we made way too many drones. Uh, it can be very, very, very obnoxious, right? But again, I just want to state for the record, early on, we want to make as many drones as possible. And actually, let's back up a little bit. Let's continue to back ourselves up. You heard me say scouting the front so important. Scouting the front, scouting the front. Okay, so he, he's moved down to the bottom of his ramp. Where are the units for LF Haunt spotting this? Let's just keep a, a little bit of tab here on the production. We're going to see a big difference here. We're going to see a big difference here. Okay, so now he sees it. He sees it. He sees it. Okay, he's getting burrow. He sees it. He could be making units. He could be making. He could be making spine crawlers. Nothing. There's nothing yet. Two overlords getting made. He should definitely make spine crawlers. He should definitely make spine crawlers. Uh oh. And here. Okay, yeah. Look, spine crawlers were way, 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 way late. Now, if he had had a unit here. I want you to just note this. Back, 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 back. You, you, you don't necessarily need to do something this excruciatingly long. But I just want to note right here. So, for instance, uh, Spine Crawler right here takes 50 seconds to build. 50 seconds to build. So, we're right at 10 minutes and 20 seconds. Let's see when he starts moving out. Right now, at 10 minutes and 25 seconds, he began moving out. So if, we, if you had a Zergling here, you would have spotted it. And the question is, do you have enough time to get those Spine Crawlers up? Do you have enough time to get the spine crawlers up? Dum -da -dum -da -dum. All right, they are just now halfway done. Um, all right, we're almost there. We need to get to 11 minutes and 15 seconds. Okay, we 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 need about an extra six or six to seven seconds to get the spine crawlers up in time. All I want to conclude from that analysis is the following: If you have units at his front, you can almost wait until the literal last second to begin making defenses. Let's say the only thing that would have saved you there is spine crawlers. You see him moving down the ramp. Oh, all right, let me start making spine crawlers. Come on, come on. Bam, finish right when he gets there. It's about a 50 second walk for him to get to your base. 50 game seconds. Um, yeah, I mean, really, if we just, say, had some speed zerglings here and we ran them up like this, he would take his army back and then we'd retreat with our speed zerglings and we could easily make spine crawlers. And what happens if he moves down here and then he moves right back up again? You can just cancel the freaking spine crawlers and get your money back. Um, 
And th this is, is, again, sometimes what this mystery is with the, with the drone timing, is, you know, you overcompensate with this, and then an attack like this happens, and Elephant, in his head, he wants to go, well, gosh, next time, I need to make even more units. Honestly, honestly, the way that Elephant is struggling right now is the correct way to struggle, which is having way, way too many drones at your expansion and losing seemingly stupidly. That is the correct way to lose. So with that in mind, I want to watch a game from Fruit Cellar. I want to watch a brief game from Fruit Cellar just to show you what he does that's so great. Um, let's see here. What he does that is so great. Um, and also, he, he will end up losing this game. He's against OGS, the STC, who's super friggin' unbelievably damn good. Um, so, he's not against a pushover by any means. But I'm going to keep both players' eyes open. We're going to see why this is the correct way to lose in a second. Because let me just state for the record that first game that we saw from iWave, he stopped making units and then began about a 10-minute long, slow, slow, slow process of losing. There was really this point in time where it was just sort of a uh, dip down. And the issue with that is you're going to, as I pause the game, you're going to look back at it, like if you're iWave or Wave I, I can't remember which one it was, but definitely had a wave in there. If you're Wave and you look back at that game, what happens? You, you kind of go, ah, oh, well, crap, maybe I really needed more. I don't know. Uh, because th there's no obvious solution. Because instinctively, when you we try to say, well, what could I possibly done to hold that off? You look at your money. You say, what solutions can I afford? If I have... Uh, you know, 150 minerals and 450 gas, my brain goes, huh, well, I could afford three infestors. Or, or, sorry, sorry, if I had 300 minerals and 450 gas, I could go, oh, yeah, I could, I could afford three infestors. Huh, yeah, okay. If I had 400 minerals and no gas, I could go, oh, well, I guess that I can, I should only really be getting spine crawlers here, or that's all I can do. If you had 400 minerals and no gas, you'd go to yourself, ah, well, I guess I, I guess I'm not even going to consider infestors. Because I have no gas. I have no gas. That is not a solution I can even consider. Now, now the reason I did that example is because imagine if you're in Wave Eye's position and you have not been making that many drones and you look at your money and you have no money. So you think to yourself, how on earth can I get myself out of this? How the hell does Zergs win this in game? Right? I'm allowed to curse on Funday Monday, but not on Newbie Tuesday. I must bleep myself. You'll say to yourself, how the hell do I possibly do anything with no extra money? And the answer is, you get way more drones. Because let me tell you something. If you have 1,500 minerals, 90 drones, and 4 roaches, and you lose, you go, sweet. Maybe I should just back off like 20 drones or something like that. And, um, and you can start seeing some very, very rapid solutions. I'm going to do one very, very brief game after this one. And even this one's going to be quite brief. So notice... He, uh, his spawning pool finishes, he makes exactly one set of Zerglings. We are going to go into the cool cam. He does a very good job of running his uh, little guy away. Now notice, he gets his two Zerglings out. He immediately begins spreading them out a little bit. He goes by these watchtowers, wants to get a uh, good spotting going on. And back to making drones. And here's the very nicely timed drone transfer. And oh, look, a Roach Warren going down. Huh, interesting. He's getting some very fast Roaches. Zergling already venturing forth because... Uh, Cool knows that he can scout the front. So there's... Okay. Notice. Notice the following. He has not gotten into the main. He does not see that there is, in fact, a double reactor thing going on. He does not see that there's a command center going on. That's fine. He doesn't need to. He scouted the front and saw a Hellion. Boom! No Marauder Rush coming. No Marauder Rush coming. No huge barracks push coming. Could be more Hellions. Could be some tech. Could be a delayed push. But instantly, by scouting the front, we see a Hellion. We know a factory had to come out fast. Bam! We have a lot of information from scouting the front, scouting the front, scouting the front. So that is a big thing to note. And look at this. Look at this. He sees that there's a Hellion en route. Look at his production. Drones. Drone, drone, drone. Just making droners, droners, droners. Uh, now he's going to make some roaches. Oh, four roaches. Okay. That's an interesting number to note. Okay, this Hellion comes in. He's just going to scoot it around. It's just one Hellion. Can't really do a horrific amount of damage. Oh, one spine crawler. 
You see that? He built the spine crawler because he's like, oh, geez, if this really keeps itself up, then I'm going to be in trouble. This Zergling didn't see anything. He's just looking for what could possibly be coming. Oh, uh, well, it looks like not more Hellions. So, great. Cool. Built the spine crawler can always cancel. There's nothing wrong with canceling buildings or canceling defensive structures if you don't need to. Or if you don't need them anymore. And in the meantime, drone, 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 do 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 drone. Oh, he's getting a lair. Cool, he's making some drones. All right, great. He's gonna, he wants to do a little bit of fancy action with his roaches. Gotta be careful, though. Gotta be careful. Uh, because then this happens. Uh, and obviously that's less than ideal. Less than ideal. But how does, how does cool respond? How does fruit seller respond? How does the champion of the GSL respond? Just making drones, making drones, making more drones, making more drones, just making drones. I want to state for the record, he hasn't really seen a damn thing that his opponent's doing, right? He poked in here, uh, he poked in, and saw that there were barracks going down. He saw that there were barracks going down, but that's about it. He doesn't know if there's an expansion. He doesn't know that there was, in fact, no double hellion that came out. He doesn't know that there's lots of marines in here. Doesn't know a lot of things. But, again... If we just look at this game state, what does STC have in his units? He has two Hellions and eight Marines, four of which are in a bunker. There is no way STC can attack. Zero. What if STC takes everything he has right now and moves out to attack? He's going to get to his opponent's base with eight Marines and two Hellions. Four Roaches alone probably are going to be able to do a lot of damage against that. At the very worst case, Cool makes like three more roaches, and he's fine, and he goes right back to making drones again. No problem whatsoever. Now we see we see Cool getting speed here. Great, going back to production, drones, drones, drones. And notice he's way ahead of his opponent in drone or er, in uh, worker production. Thirty-seven from Cool to twenty-eight of his opponent. Going back to the to the production tab, drone, 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 drone. Going back to the Cool camera. All right, so he's making lots of drones. Oh, he's getting an infestation pit. Definitely curious what he's going to do with that. We did have a discussion where we said that infestors are a great power unit. If we have three infestors, we can delay a lot of pushes. We can mess with a lot of things. Roaches are getting a little bit bold here, but my god, he seems to be making only drones. He's making five overlords. Wow, he really hated the fact that he got supply blocked. Yeah, all right, now his overlords are done. What is he going to do? He's going to make eight zerglings. Huh. Just eight and then drones? I wonder what that's about. I'll tell you what it's about. Speed Zerglings are very good for contain. He sees that I have Speed Zerglings, or like his army moves out, Speed Zerglings go in, hit his workers. He has to retreat or else he loses all his workers. So he retreats, you pull back with your Speed Zerglings, and you just get to keep making drones this whole time. Drone, 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 drone. All right, great. Now, notice that STC is putting a lot of pressure on Fruit Cellar. Yeah, sure. All right, great. Whatever. His response is then to make drones. Here comes a very fast expansion. In that game with Wave, Wave was expanding around 100 food. Remember how I was appalled at how late that is? Here we are at 60 food, and an expansion is already going down. And it looks a lot like Fruit Cellar has way, way, way more units. So, yeah, see here, the Zerglings at the front. Not only are they sort of preparing to do some sort of counterattack if need be, but they're also scouting the front, just seeing exactly what's up. So notice that these few Zerglings are causing these Marines to be a little bit doubtful, right? Cause them to pull back a little bit. So we're seeing, we're seeing uh, right now, we're seeing some Infestors get made. We're seeing more Zerglings get made. Perhaps this is the first time, really, where Cool is going, oh, there was a big army coming out. And as we can see, there's the big army moving out, a good old only Marine army moving forth. So how does he respond? He has just now started making units, and his infestors have just now hatched. Perfect. Now, this is the thing that um, will cause a lot of people to shriek and uh, about imbalance and all this misery. Um, as we see, we go back to production. Looks like more drones. Infestors and drones. He made just enough zerglings that he thought he could defend this. And he's going right back to making that. Now here's the tragic part. You see those infestors with their good old 73 energy? 74? 75? It was literally like two seconds too late. So this is going to end up not working out so well. If he would thrown down that fungal growth, the medivax wouldn't have arrived in time. Oh my god, an expansion would stay alive. Oh, how tragic, how tragic. Now, uh, that's obnoxious by STC, but here's the big difference between a player like Cool and then some of the other Zerg players who are on the ladder. Most Zerg players right now will crumble, right? The game will be over. 
Going to the resource counting station, look at this. The foods are still pretty damn close. Cool is only 10 or about 15 food behind. Only about 15 food behind, and as he traps this, he might be able to do a, a, a little bit more damage. Yep, Zergling Infester, always effective. Yep, getting it. Cool. Literally. <laughs> as in, interesting. And then STC is going to give us a little present. He's going to just march that thing right back there. And hey, look. Hey, look, cool is making drones. Look at that. Go to production. Yeah, that's right. He's making a ton of drones. He's getting Baneling Nests now. He's getting upgrades now. He doesn't really favor that many Zerglings. Look at how few Zerglings there are here in general. Big power units, Infestors. Small amount of Zerglings. And then he's going to have these big power units, the Infestors. And he's going to have Banelings. Oh my, there has been a drop in the back of the base. This is just STC being really good. Now again, 90% of Zerg players lose right now. 90% of Zerg players are Dunzies at this point. Um... I'm, I really wish that those Infested Terrans hatch faster. Like, sincerely, I do. Alas, alas. But in production, oh, hey, he's still making drones. He's still making drones. Most players would have crumbled by now. They would have been absolutely falling apart. But weirdly enough, Cool has four hatches. He has a lot of drones in general. It sucks he doesn't have a spawning pool. Because if he had that spawning pool, that means he could make Zerglings and Banelings to hold off this attack. Seriously, this is an unbelievably close game. And look, Cool is rapidly swinging right back uh, into this game again. And but really, if you are playing the way that Cool is in this game, uh, making a double spawning pool, if you're playing that way, you probably, probably can see that Zerg has a lot of options. He could begin making roaches. He could throw down some spine crawlers. He's spreading out his infestors. That seems like a good way to deal with the drops. Okay, infester baneling. Man, if only he had more Zerglings. Alas, his first of two spawning pools is only just now wrapping up. Great. This is the correct way to lose, where suddenly you just don't really have anything, right? He just came in with a giant army, and all you had were some Infestors and some Banelings and whoopsie-daisies, and if only I'd been able to keep this alive just a little bit, um, you know, by making a few extra Zerglings. And if only I'd been watching my minimap a little harder so I didn't lose my spawning pool. I would have been able to hold this off. So there's killing everything off in the main, and as we're going to see in just a moment, this can feel quite crushing, quite crushing. Um, oh yeah, there's the neural parasite right there. Oh no, oh, oh, how terrible. Now, I, this will just ruin your thing, your thought process because of the way that feels. Now, I have the benefit of having played Brood War for 12 years, and I played Zerg in Brood War. And it was the same deal. You had larva that you had to select to make either drones or units. And when I look at a game like that, the way that that game used to feel in like 2003 or 4 when I played, is it felt like I was getting smashed, I was getting punched into the ground, he was hell and harassing my drones, he attacked my expansion and he killed it, he did a drop and he killed off my pool and then he did an attack and I got crushed. It feels like you just get, keep getting punched into the ground until one day you wake up and you're a cockroach, right? That's the way it feels. But ignore that, because Zerg is a momentum race. What it's going to feel like is you start the game, and okay, you're battling, he's trying to hammer you down, he's hammering you down, and then the instant that that lets up, just whoop, just way momentum towards infinity. I want all of you to rewatch the GSL games. In particular, rewatch GSL Game 1, uh, because I'm almost certain that that's free for everybody. Go to GOMTV.net, watch the way Fruit Seller plays. Watch the way he plays, and you'll note that there's almost no units at the start, almost no units, and it looks really scary, and it looks scary, and it looks scary, and then all of a sudden, BAM! Fruit Seller just wins the game convincingly with a shit ton of units! That's the way that Zerg just works. So a lot of drone timing comes down to feelings, right? You want to play the game like what we just saw Cool play, where he makes... Way too, he's constantly, seemingly constantly making drones, squeezing in a few of these power units, right? Getting a few of these power units in. And when he loses, how could he have avoided that? Well, if he had had an Infestor in the main, he could have shut down that dropship. And if he had had his Infestors out two seconds earlier, he could have held that Expo. And then, and then if he held off the drop, he wouldn't have lost his pool. Then he could have had all those Banelings. And then, yeah, it would have easily swung way far into the lead. He was even getting good upgrades, too. Oh, obviously, totally. But it just feels kind of shitty. Ignore that. Also, in your game, when you have the feeling of, ugh, I certainly hope that he can't move into my base and kill me, 
Go double check to see if that's actually accurate in the slightest. Coming back, ah, not to the five minute mark, that's a little too early. Let's kind of come out here to 11 minutes. Uh, actually, we're gonna inch back just a little bit to the nine minute mark, perfect. Now, if we just look at this game state, uh, if we just look at this in the unit counting station, Zerg has eight lings, four roaches, that's it. Eight lings, four roaches. Doesn't sound big, really is not big. And a lot of players just look at the army that they have and they're just kind of like, oh, this is drab and oh, whoops, look, I'm gonna lose some of my Zerglings here, oh my. But again, if we go and look at his base, this is really all he has. He has 24 Marines, four are missing. Oh, there they are. There's, oh, yep, there's the fourth one. This is it. This is literally the entire army of the STC. He's going to be able to do good things with it, but that's the whole friggin' thing. Always benchmark yourself, because I think you'll be a little surprised if you're watching rewatching one of your games and you say, right now, when I took my third, I was so scared. Or you could say, right here, I didn't want to take my third because I thought that he could kill it. And then you suddenly reveal the whole map, go literally count his units, and you go, oh, hell. Oh, yeah, yeah, nothing. I could have made more drones. I could have been more like cool. So in recap, rely on power units. Rely on power units. Um, to, to, so that way, they're low on larva, so that way you can spend the rest of your larva on drones. Rely on, a lot on on ignoring your fear and rewatching replays. Just make drones, because the correct way to lose is to have as many drones as you possibly could have at the moment you lost, because then you can just back off a little bit, and you know about how much money you're going to have. If you didn't make enough drones at the start, you have no idea how much money you could have. You're probably going to be floating right around zero, and you're going to feel terrible. Um, now, uh, and there, I think there was one more thing I wanted to say, but I mean, that about covers it. You're, you're going to be just fine. Rely a little bit more. Oh, yeah. Oh, of course. Scouting the front. Scouting the front. Scouting the front. Checking the front repeatedly. Keep stuff right outside his front and watch your minimap. Here's the process I go through. Am I making workers? With all three races, this is where my eye goes. Here, I'll even do it for you. So I look down at the bottom. Am I making workers? I check my nexus. Okay, I'm making probes. Then I look at the minimap. Anything interesting going on there? Okay. And then I look up here at my food up in the top right corner. Is, uh, is he, or like, am I getting supply blocked, right? I have this zigzag pattern, this just gentle triangle that I'm doing. And occasionally I'll stop and look at the main screen, but not really so much. Generally that little triangle of look is what I'm doing. So I'm looking at the mini-map uh, a lot. If I'm constantly looking at that unit that I have outside his front, I have a really good sense of what's coming up. The last game that I wanted to do briefly on this, slightly longer than normal, um, maybe Tuesday. Slightly longer than normal. Uh, was a game submitted by a bronze level player that really shows um, the integration of build order with timing. We're going to go, where is it? Yeah, access drones. Here we go. Loading it up, loading it up. Here it comes. Perfect. Uh, Nikarn is the opponent here. And then we have Octenko here at the bottom. Now, these are bronze level players. We know that their APM is really not going to be uh, very high. We're going to note they're going to be much more friendly than us jaded diamond level players who just log in, good luck, have fun, and then when they win, they're like, yes, I crushed him, all right. Um, it's so important, so, so, so important that a lot of the discussion I was saying was about looking up here at the money in terms of our solutions. Like, what can we possibly do to get out of this, right? In general, you want to be having your money really, really low at all points in time. So, for instance, Otenko opens up, or Octenko opens up completely normally, right? He gets gas, pool, hatch, his money's low, he's getting speed, he's getting a queen, perfect. He could move out here with these overlords, um, definitely. But then all of a sudden he gets 300 um, minerals, and at this point you should really be saying to yourself, I could expand right now. I could do something with this money right now. I could make a roach warren, I could make another queen. You want to keep your money very, 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 very low in StarCraft 2. And I'm going to speed things up a little bit. And we can clearly see that just not enough money is being spent. And in particular, not really any scouting is going on. Other than the fact that the money's high. Other, I, want, I really want you to note this. Other than the fact that the money is very high, Octenko is playing fine. Right? He, he's made some Zerglings. Not a lot. Probably a little bit too many. Um, but, uh, you know, a little... Depends on when it, when his timing is for his expansion. But other than that, he's largely making drones. He's continuing to vomit larva with his queen. His energy is actually fairly low. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's at 47, but, you know, this this um, can easily 
This is something that can easily be repaired over time at the Bronze League. It's not like, oh my god, I have 27 energy on my queen. It needs to be a 25 max always. I mean, that's fine. The basic structure to this is 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 reasonable. But money-wise, we just need to be dumping out more money. And when this game was sent to me, there's kind of this uh, interesting moment here where... I, I, I remember when I saw this game, and then I re looked at the replay title, and the replay title was Excess Drones. Was Excess Drones. Because looking at the production, Octanko really is devoting a lot of energy to making drones. And now we have these hatches going down. We do have these uh, this other hatch going down at the gold. Blah, 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 etc., etc., etc. And then it looks like uh, he moves in with Zealots and ends up delivering kind of a crushing blow, and that's all, that's all she wrote, right? Yeah, Okenko makes some roaches here, and ends up killing everything off, he lost quite a few drones, and I want you to go in the following order. It's so key that you don't jump straight to the, oh, I guess I made too many drones. I didn't have the units, maybe I just needed to make more units instead of drones, because again, the title of this replay was Excess Drone Timing. You, it's so important that you look up here and say, okay, at the time that this attack got here to my base, yeah, I didn't have any units, but how much money did I have? I had over 2,000 minerals. I could have I could have built spine crawlers early. I could have, hell, I could have expanded here earlier and built spine crawlers here, and he never would have been able to get into my main. Um, I could have had a scout at the front of his base. There are a lot of solutions we can work with within this budget. Um... After, after your money's, you're able to keep your money really, 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 really low, that's really when you need to begin asking yourself questions about should I make drones or should I be making units? If your money's at 2,500, the, the problem is really that you're, you're just not playing quickly enough. You're not macroing enough. And that is so important that you see the distinction between that. If, if that you are making, you're not sure if you're making the right amount of drones, you're not sure if you're making the right amount of units, but you have like 1,000 minerals, and I'm talking to you, Diamond Level Zerg. Yeah, if you have like 1,000 minerals left over, maybe you don't need to change anything with your drone timing. You'll, you won't know until you're spending all your money. Work with the solutions that you have been given. So we are going to take, we are going to take uh, some questions, just some brief ones, because we've been running about uh, a little over an hour right now. We've been running for exactly one hour and two minutes. So I'm just going to go with about one hour and five minutes. So, um, oh yeah, great question from Cytone, who I recognize. Hello, Cytone. Says, hey, you day nine. I often find myself trying a new build against a friend, losing, and then never going back to it. But I want to be able to try a build and then improve on it if it just doesn't work out. How can I know if the build has room for improvement or just kind of sucks? So this is a big difference between the super ultra competitive nerd like me and just your average gamer who's trying to improve at SC2. Whenever I lose, I immediately get hyper motivated to force it to work. Um, or Idra is actually a great example of this. Idra, for um, for any of you who... Wow, that's... Yeah, that's fancy. All right. That's exactly the way I want to look. Perfect. Answering the question. So, uh, Idra, for any of you who are following his games in the beta or uh, who've actually just followed Idra really closely since the start of SC2. He has changed styles fairly wildly um, over time. I mean, he used to emphasize almost exclusively roaches, because uh, that's way back when they were one food, and then he went to, like, no roaches and almost exclusively hydralisks. Now he's doing lots of very weird timings, where he seems like he's always about to die, and then suddenly gets a whole bunch of units and that sort of thing. Oh, another great game to watch is... Um, um, uh, what's his face? Idra against... Idra against whoever he was up against in the round of 16 on Blistering Sands. Great example of making drones until the very last second. Um, but... Idra has changed a lot of styles all over the place, and there were always periods where Idra would suddenly start to lose. Like, for instance, he used to pretty much just open large numbers of roaches against... Terran. Like, literally almost all roaches. Um, but then players got really good with marauders and really good with tanks, and they started doing tank drops against him, and people would get really giddy because they would upload a replay of them beating Idra. Like, oh, I dropped, I dropped his tank on his high ground, and all he had was roaches. Ah, I'm better than Idra. 
But the fact about Idra is that Idra was relentless in doing that same thing over and 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 over again until suddenly, going only roaches, he was able to deal with huge marauder balls, drops get up on his cliffs, big numbers of siege tanks, and still come out with an edge. It was incredible, incredibly, incredibly, incredibly cool to see him do that, to just have such a mastery over a wide variety of styles. So yeah, when you try a build and it loses, play just play it again, just play again, play again. Wait, it's, it's one loss, man. If you've lost 100 games in a row, now you're probably looking at something you should ditch. Even if you've lost 10 games in a row with it, could still be a lot of good stuff in there. The, um, for any of you who, who played StarCraft or not, there's a famous player named Bisu who there is this underused unit called a Corsair that everyone's like, yeah, you only get Corsairs in very specific situations. You only get them on island maps and that sort of jazz. But he played in a very weird way that just made it work. And he used, Bisu used to, used to lose all the time doing this one style, and everyone's like, yeah, whatever. And then he came around and smashed everyone with it, and now people only do that, really. Like, it, it, it's pretty amazing. Um... Uh, I'm a cool man, 27. Ask if I'll have his babies. Absolutely, just email me a time and place. I'm gonna take one more question. Sorry for the lack of questions, but um, that's what happens. That's what happens. Had a lot of uh, good stuff to do. Um, let's see. Let's see. Um, oh, so here's a great question by AJ Prax. This is gonna be the final question. Who says, Day 9, I'm a relatively new player, and while my grasp of StarCraft II strategy is decent, I find myself restricted in the strategies and builds I can employ because of my inability to execute certain tactics effectively, such as Reaper, Reaper Micro while still building. Do you have any advice or specific practice techniques for improving these skills? And would you advise sticking with more easily executed strategies as a new player? I don't care what sort of strategy you pick, but if you are new, pick one strategy in each matchup. One. This many. That is how you will improve. You pick one, and you only execute it again and again and again and again and again and again. Because I will be very blunt. No matter what I do, like literally me specifically, I can do any strategy. But if I have good mechanics, I guarantee you I will get in the Diamond League with that strategy. If you said, Day 9, can you get into Diamond League only making Hellions? Uh, absolutely. I guarantee you I can do that. Because that's how fundamental mechanics, having smooth control, and all that good jazz is. In a sense, real strategy and real analysis comes when you're high up on the diamond levels. Um, that is the edge you get. Because in a sense, you're only ever looking for what edge you need. Um, at the lower levels, everyone is just not very fast, so they cannot build very much stuff. So if you can be fast and build very much stuff, you will win. It does not matter what your stuff is. If my opponent is, like, going only Baneling, I can win going only Marine if I just have way more Marines than he knows how to deal with. It, ignore those counters. Macro is the super ultra pivotal emphasis. Uh, keeping your money low, keeping everything smooth. So if you like Reaper Micro, if, if it's fun for you, do it by all means. Don't, don't ever let anyone tell you not to do a strategy. you got to be comfortable if you start losing. Um, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with losing. But you need to know that, that strategy will result in a loss if you don't control it properly. And then just only practice it again and again and again and again and again and again and again. I had a friend who was like D, D plus level um, uh, in, in Protoss vs. Zerg. And I told him literally only play that one matchup, only play PvZ. And he did so for like a month and a half. And he got to like C plus, um, which is pretty big. That's the equivalent of saying that he was like a 1,000 level diamond player and worked his way up to like a 2,000 diamond level player. In, in one matchup, because you only played that. By limiting yourself and staying focused, you open up a lot more possibilities. That's actually part of the reason why I didn't do a Zerg vs. Zerg today. I wanted to stay mostly with Zerg vs. Protoss and Zerg vs. Terran. Um, so that way we could kind of see those, how they played out. So that's going to wrap up today's Day 9 Daily for Newbie Tuesday. So again, uh, for next week's Fun Day Monday, I want a 3v3 or a 4v4 of you only making one unit each. Get three of your buddies, get together, and at the start of the game, you must publicly announce what one unit you'll be making all game long. Yes, you can make observers and overseers and overlords. Um, I said you could make queens, but I'm tempted to redact that and say no queens if you are playing Zerg, but you can make queens. I'll let you make queens. And then for next week's Newbie Tuesday, submit to me a replay 
of you losing to Banshees or struggling against Banshees. That is a very obnoxious unit that a lot of people have tons of trouble with. So I want to look at those. So, again, those email addresses are Monday at Day9.tv and Tuesday at Day9.tv. And I'll let you figure out which one is which. So, last but not least, tomorrow, Greetorp's coming on as a special guest for Friend Day Wednesday. I will see you tomorrow. Same time, same place. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye.